praise the Lord. Uh, he's everything. He's everything to me. Thank you, Lord. He's everything. of God resting on us. I, I believe that. You know, it's a good thing to acknowledge that, um, that the Lord's always there. Praise the Lord. Nobody else this morning? Um, any prayer requests? No, no prayer requests? Amen. Okay, let's, um, let's sing a few more songs. Let's sing this one above all.
all the kings and kingdoms of this earth. Amen. It's a good thing to know when we see the kingdoms of this earth falling apart. We want to be belonging to his kingdom. Amen. Amen. I saw love, mercy, and grace. I saw love.
thou art. How great thou art.
name for them. This and this one only believe as we invited Brother Albert to come. Oh. into one body whether we be Jews, Gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit Amen, Amen. Let's just pray Heavenly Father we just sang Jesus is here Lord we don't want you out we want you in here we don't want to have closed doors we don't want to reject the word of god we no. want to invite you to come this morning and minister to us we just commit this time of meditation into your hands and we pray that you would just speak through us and let us hear what the spirit saith and ask these things in the name of jesus christ for your glory amen, amen. you may be seated yes it's interesting jesus is here and in Revelation, says, Behold, I'm at the door and knock, because he's been put out. A lot of churches, <laughs> what's missing is Jesus Christ. A lot of people have good teachings, so-called interesting stuff, but Jesus Christ is missing. So we just want to make sure we speak about the things we know and the things we have experience and not just fantasies and wishful thinking I believe we are I can't say we but there is a church of the living God I believe that and it's not a building it's the mystical body of Jesus Christ and I'll, I hope you know what I'm trying to say it's not this group you know you go down the road it says Church of Christ. Well, you got another one. It may say um, Assemblies of God. You got another one, the Bride Church. You know, or the Spoken Word Tabernacle, or all sorts of things. 
You go in there, that doesn't make you part of it. It's a mystical body. And to be part of it, as we read, we have to be baptized by one spirit into Christ. It's, it's like a person who is born into a family. I'd just like to get that sort of uh, uh, explained this way. If you're born into a family, you're part of their family. We've had a neighbor. She used to live with us most of the time, stayed in the, with the girls and ate with us and stayed in a, had a, down a, a bed, and, but she wasn't part of the family. When it comes to a family photo, oh, I'm sorry, but, you know, you're not part of it. Because she was not born, doesn't mean she wasn't nice, doesn't mean she didn't do the same thing, she doesn't, doesn't mean she didn't partake in what the family did, but you have to be born into it. <clears throat> and then you have people in the family, they're born into it, and some are a bit clumsy, some make mistakes, some, some are not uh, doing right, but they're still part of the family. And you know, the emphasis is to be born of the Spirit. In Ephesians, you also read about the unity of the Spirit. Come to the unity of faith, of the Spirit of God. And also in understanding, there's two different things. You have a fivefold ministry which is to perfect the body of Christ. But you first have to be part of the body. You can't perfect something that's not part of it. So the emphasis is the unity has to be in the spirit and then there's a growth. I'd like to read you some interesting scriptures which may uh, make it clearer. Second Samuel chapter 7 Verses 13 to 15. It says here, He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. And with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not be depart away from him. As I took it from Saul whom I put away before thee. Here we speak about Solomon who was to build the temple. And we also know from the scripture that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So if he born of the spirit. Christ lives in us and we become the temple in that sense. So bearing that in mind, it's being part of the church of the living God has nothing to do with going to church. Just remember that. It's not the building. It's in us. Now, in First Chronicles 28, I like to go through that too. Um, Verses first Chronicles two and three. Hang on. Chronicles twenty-eight verses two and three. It says Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build a house of rest. For the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. See, the Lord laid uh, on the heart of David to, to build a house. To the, uh, the building where they can house the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant where God dwelt but he wasn't meant to do it 
doesn't mean he wasn't part of things, but he had uh, been a man of war, even though he had on his heart, it wasn't for him to do, it was for Samuel to do, uh, for, uh, sorry, Solomon to do. And, uh, but he played a part of the whole process. Now, then if you go to verse uh, 9 uh, of that chapter, 9 and 10, it says here, Take heed now, for the Lord has chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. And then David gave to Solomon, listen to this, his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof, of the upper chambers thereof, of the inner palace thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat. So what happened? Solomon was building the temple, but David had the vision of how it should be. So he had to do it according, you can say, according to the word. It has to be according to scripture. Whatever we do, whatever we, uh, it's got to be according to the scripture. So if I give you a few, another thoughts on it. You see, the temple was built to house the Ark of the Covenant. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. We are the temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. So as the temple had to be according to the heavenly pattern in a certain way before God could actually be in it, so I believe he prepares us to be ready to receive Christ. I think so. You know, there's another thought. Sometimes man has the idea of how you should be or how you should believe and what you should do to be able to receive the Holy Spirit. But what's it to me if God receives you the way you are? It's not for me to say, oh, no, you can't. It's like a man who wants to marry a woman and you say, nah, she's no good, you know, or she, she should first clean herself up or do this or do that. What's that to me if a man says, I love her, I want to marry her. And if the Lord chooses somebody, it's not for me to decide, no, you can't be or you're doing so because you don't see things the way I do or whatever. It's God's business whom he chooses. So the temple represents this body, you can say. The Ark of the Covenant represents the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. In Hebrews 9 uh, chapter 9, verses 2 to 5 says, For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat. What do you think about it? In the holiest of holies was the ark of the covenant, and what was there? The golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden, the golden pot that had manna. God supplied the, the food. You know, it's not something they had to do. God supplies all our needs. We take it that way. And Aaron's rod that bothered. Here was a dead stick, you can say, and it started to bud and bear even fruit. That's what happens when you're in the presence of God. 
you can feel as dead as can be, but you go in the presence of God and you start to come alive. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really wonderful. And the tables of the covenant, the word was in there as well. So these things have to be present in us as well. 1 Corinthians 6. I have a few scriptures I want to go through it to so put the picture together. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of Harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, <laughs> which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He is speaking to believers. No, you know, don't you realize? Why are you doing what you're doing? Don't you realize? This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You see, sometimes people remove themselves from the family, you can say, but they're still family. Even if, if, if there is a mess, you're still family. If you have received Christ... <clears throat> You're one of his, if you're born of his spirit, you're part of that mystical body. So, if you're part of him, if he's in you, why are you doing the things you do? You see, that's what he's saying. Don't you realize? You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Why do you do these things? And he makes examples, you know, people committing fornication, doing all sorts of things. Don't you realize? You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know, there's uh, so many, many uh, teachings of self-reformation and, and living clean, which is, is sanctification, which is definitely part of it. But you see, you can be sanctified and never been born again. You can live a clean life, but you've never been born again. You can never drink, nor smoke, nor do anything wrong, for not being born again, not even being part of it. But you can do all the wrong things. Christ came to forgive you your sins through the precious blood he shed. Mm. You see, there is a difference. I'll give you another example. <laughs> when I first came to New Zealand, well, my English was worse than now, definitely. Uh, I couldn't speak English, so I stumbled my way through. But I was here for about three years, and I got citizenship. So I had a passport. I was considered a New Zealander. <laughs> Can you imagine? Here comes, comes this fella from Switzerland and speaks a funny English and swears and does everything. I was a New Zealander. <laughs> then I met a, 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 a fellow at work. He came from Holland when he was five years old. Or four years old, the parents came to New Zealand. He went to school here. He spoke like a Kiwi, acted like a Kiwi, if you want to call it that way. But he had no citizenship. So he looked the picture perfect. I didn't. But I had citizenship and he didn't. So if you take that, there's no way we can judge by appearance. It's by citizenship. Do we have that Holy Spirit? Well, if you have the Holy Spirit, let him lead you. You know, let him lead you. Sons of God are those who are led or allow the Spirit to lead them. So let, let's have the Spirit leading. Let's not judge just on the appearance. But I'll tell you one thing. 
the more you meditate and have a communion with Christ, the more you become Christ-like. And we know Christ is the Word. The more you identify with His Word. So in First Chronicles, we we'll go again, chapter 28, in verse 11. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch. So he gave him the plan how it should be. We have the instructions in here given to us so we we have a pattern how it should be so Solomon was told how to build the temple then there's another interesting things the pattern of all, all the dedicated things also uh, the whole lot so God gave the plan to Solomon through King David. We get instructions sometimes through reading the Bible or through a brother or a sister who, who, who by the Holy Spirit says something and we, we get instructions like that as well. So your life plan must come from the Holy Spirit either directly or from hearing the word preached. God may use someone to minister to you, but ultimately it has to come from the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, my sheep will, will hear my voice. Mm -hmm. So we respond to that. We don't respond to a concept, or we don't respond to a, just a certain set of rules. We respond to the Holy Spirit. You will have a witness and you will know the truth when you hear it. Now, there's an interesting scripture which uh, don't hear preach much about it. First John five, six to nine. It says, "This is He that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood." And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. It's bearing witness. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They are one. It's, there's not uh, three different ones. They are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree in one if we receive the witness of men the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his son yeah wonderful and I like to maybe clarify it a bit more I, I've got a quote here which sort of brings it out quite interestingly there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. You can't have the Father without the Son, or the Son without the Holy Ghost. They are one. You see, that is also a revelation. They are one. You can't have one and not the other. You have that. Then there are three that bear record in earth. The water, the blood, the spirit. And they are not one, but agree in one. There you are in one complete ceiling. Justification and Luther, under Luther, water, sanctif water, sanctification by the blood. Justification was Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification by faith. That scripture, you justify it by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you if you want to know what justify it means, there's no more record of what you've done wrong. You justify it, acquitted. You know, there's nothing, uh, no record. <coughs> Sanctification through the blood. Hebrews 13, 12 and 13. Jesus suffered without the gate 
that he might sanctify the people through his own blood. So you sanctify through the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not sanctified by living a holy life in that sense, by l depriving yourself of, of any pleasure and whatever. That, that is a kind of a form of sanctification, but we are sanctified through faith in Jesus Christ, through his blood. Mm. Now, <clears throat> it says here in Luke 24:49, And behold... I sent the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And Acts 1.8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. See, a Holy Ghost baptism was to last until Jesus returns again. Mm -hmm. A little while and the world sees me no more, yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. Doing the things that I do, you'll do also through the Spirit working through the church. See, it's, it's the work of Christ. And if we receive him or have received him these things are in us you know we justify it not because we do certain things we justify it because of mm -hmm. faith in him we sanctify it because he shed his blood we have the holy ghost because he gave it to us yeah you know it's not something we we achieve by doing things it is his his grace his love you see god provides the material and all you do is serve him he'll provide these things you know it's not our achievement you know a lot of religions you, you sort of step up and it's popular with people you know they try to achieve certain levels you know, you know buddhism has these levels you grow up and never achieve it you know it's like you're in a great big dark hole and you sort of climb up on the edge and you come maybe you know halfway up if you're very good and if you're totally good if you're one of the, the <coughs> top spiritual ones you come three quarters up but you're still in a hole we all need the Lord to lift us out mm -hmm. you see but that's religion of man and you will find it's popular you know a church of Scientology you, you go through different levels now you achieve this level you're up to the next level I mean, that's how it works in, in those religious things. But Jesus Christ picks you up and puts you on the level. There's no us doing it. But because he did that for us, we want to serve him. We want to please him. We want to act, not act, be the part of the body he ordained us to be. Like it says in the scripture, are all hands no or should the foot talk to the hand or the hand to the foot because you're not a hand you know part of the body or the eye to the ear you know we all by one spirit are baptized into the body of christ then we the church of the living god part of the mystical body and i i, I know for a fact there is a unity in spirit which should be the unity in doctrine and the understanding we grow into it we have a fivefold ministry trying to perfect us to come to a common understanding but that is not what makes you part of the body of Christ mm -hmm. you can go to a place where they all agree a certain thing yeah <laughs> I mean uh, uh, I, I've, I've watched a few a few uh, different churches um, just a few minutes of, of what they teach or preach and some of it is so way out but they have people there they all agree with whatever they teach or preach that kind of unity <laughs> separates you from the other mm. brothers and the other brothers that kind of unity brings a separation 
which is not of the Lord. The Holy Spirit brings a unity. But then we try to aim to come into a unity of understanding. So we agree with things. It's like in a marriage. You don't always see things the same way. The wife may have a different opinion to the husband. And then you can either argue or you can come to the place and say, look, we're married, we love each other, let's talk about it. Why do you see it this way or why is it this way? Let's just pray that the Lord, you know, opens our eyes. I may see it wrong or you may see it wrong. Yeah, you know, you work on that, but it doesn't change the fact that you're married. And if you have the Holy Ghost and you're part of the body of Christ, you will find babes in Christ. You feel you will find backslidden brothers. You will find backslidden sisters. You will find people who actually are living closer to the Lord than others, but have to be born again. Then you say, why don't you do this? Why don't you see this? Look, if the same spirit that wrote the word is in you, you agree with the word. Amen. You will. But you may not be up to a in your maturity to live accordingly or, mm. or something happened or you have been influenced the wrong way but we need to be part of the body and then we need to take our place and, and, and do what we are ordained by God to do unto him otherwise we never be any, any use for anybody see God provides the material all you have need of is to serve him. First Chronicle 28, 14 and 15 says, that's <clears throat> King David, He gave of gold by weight for things of gold, for all instruments of all manner of service, silver also for all instruments of silver by weight, for all instruments of every kind of service, even the weight for the candlesticks of gold and for the lamps of gold by weight for every candlestick and for the lamps thereof and for the candlesticks of silver by weight both for the candlestick and also for the lamps thereof according to the use of every candlestick Solomon didn't need to go and find a job and get some money David provided all that was needed for that temple. All that's needed for us to be <laughs> the way God wants us to be isn't here. He provides the plan and he also pre provides the means of it. The Lord, I, I need of this. He will provide it. Well, if you tell me I have to make this golden candlestick, I need gold, you know. He provided it. It wasn't Solomon. David provided the gold and the silver. God provides what you have need of. You know, we sometimes seek it in other ways or slog along and, and try to do it in our own strength. No, God provides all we have need of. If you want to... <laughs> look, that's another thing. If you're in God's business and you want to do something for God and you feel led to do something, He will provide the means. Never forget when I was uh, just a very young Christian, I uh, uh, met up with all sorts of people, and uh, there was this young couple, oh, got to be missionaries in New Guinea or somewhere, they wanted to go somewhere to be missionaries. So they went around church after church begging for money, left, right, and center. And I thought, well, if the Lord tells you to go, He will make a way and He'll provide for it. You see, well, it's, it's not, I'm not saying sit around idle or whatever, but if God's in it, He'll make a way. He'll provide it. I knew a man, he, he had no money, <laughs> and God told him to go to a convention somewhere. Well, he had no money, but he believed the Lord told him to go. So he, he, he went down to the railway station, despite not having a ticket or money. He stood there, the, tr the train arrived. And oh, he thought, Lord, you told me to go, you know. 
at just the last moment, somebody tapped him and said, look, you can have my ticket. I have to go somewhere else. I can't go. He had the ticket, went on the, on the train, and he went there. I met a sister when I was in Jerusalem many years ago, and she was told by the Lord to go to a convention. And she was poor. They had no money. But here again, she knew the Lord told her to go. So according to scripture, I believe the Lord provides. If he asked to build a temple, and he said, put golden candlesticks in there, he'll provide the gold. Mm -hmm. And he did it through David. This lady, sister, went to the airport. No ticket, no money. It was in America she was. Here was a queue. Check in. <laughs> they showed a ticket. She didn't have a ticket. But she had faith. Not just imag imaginary faith. The Lord actually told her to go to this convention. Mm. That is different. Then he'll provide if it's him. It's not wishful thinking. Oh, I'd love to go and be part of it. No, he told you to go. He might say, don't go. And then people try to force their way. And it's not always good. But so she was in the queue. And it got closer and closer. And then when, when she uh, arrived at the counter with no ticket, oh, the lights were flashing and belts going. She was the millionth customer of that airline, and she got a free ticket. How's that? You work that one out. You can't. But God provides. And you know, if this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, He wants it a certain way. He'll give you the means to actually furnish this place so the Spirit can dwell in it. He'll give you the means. But don't seek them somewhere else. Don't say, oh, look, golden candlestick. We have, I haven't got any gold. You know, make them out of brass. That'll do it, you know? No, that's not. Say, so God said, gold? I need gold. Lord, I need the gold to make those candlesticks. I need these things. Lord, I need the Holy Spirit working through my life so I can be a shining light. Yeah. He'll provide. He'll yeah. provide. You see, so uh, your life's plan... Uh, sorry, I, I'm, not, I'm not down there. <laughs> down here. He fills the temple with His Spirit once we are as one with Him. Once we are one with Him. He fills us with his spirit. So in Second Chronicle five, thirteen to fourteen it says, It came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. If we mean business with him, if we <laughs> commune with him, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments as music, there was a complete unity. And praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. <laughs> For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Amen. See, that's when they dedicated that temple. Because it was made according to the pattern God showed David. David showed Solomon. He provided the materials which were uh, ordained of God to be. And then they were in there in one accord. In unity. Praising God. You know, what had a trumpet? And one had a symbol, and the one was just singing. That's the body of Christ, you can say. Amen. One may, may, may just ring every now and then, the other one blows a trumpet, and the other one blasts this one, and the other one <laughs> sings <laughs> sweetly, all in harmony. Yeah. And then <laughs> that presence filled the temple. Amen. And there was no need to minister. Have you ever been in the presence of God? Yeah. You don't need anybody to tell you anything. Mm. The Lord is ministering to yeah. you. <laughs> you know? And I think 
If, if preachers could be more sensitive, they would shut up more than they preach. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's not the preaching. It's mm. just the Lord has to minister to us. Mm. Yeah. We, we want to encourage one another in the Lord. But here that presence filled that place yeah. in such a powerful way, the Lord was present. No need to minister. Yeah. Couldn't even yeah. minister. Yeah. What else do you want to say? Yeah. <laughs> if the Lord's here, what, what else do you need to yeah. say? Yeah. Amen. Or we can say, come Lord Jesus, if he comes, that's it. Praise the Lord. We are the temple, a complete building. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, will clean out this temple as he did in Jerusalem. Amen. You know that one? That temple in Jerusalem was there. But it was, you can say, contaminated, not the way it ought to be. John 2, 13 to 17 says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changes of money sitting. And when he had made a scorch of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes' money and overthrew the tables. And said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. That's in Psalm 69, verse 9. Yeah. Here he comes to the temple. Now he mentioned, here he comes to us, <laughs> the temple. And he sees, oh, well, they were selling oxen. Well, what I do they to sacrifice, you know? We help the people, so it's easier to sacrifice. They can just buy it here. Mm. Money change it, you know, make it convenient. That does not belong into the house of God. Yeah. It has its place somewhere, but certain things don't belong into this temple. You, you know, that's, that's the point. So Jesus comes and cleans it out. He didn't rebuild the temple. He didn't make a new temple. He didn't say uh, uh, the temple was wrong. No, what was in it was wrong. So sometimes we need to clean out these things. And say, no, that's not part of me. That's not part of me. I don't want that part of my life. Get out of, of here. Amen. You know, anything contrary to the word of God, we don't want it to be part of us. We want it out of the way. So Jesus cleans us up. Come, Lord Jesus. Was yeah. to whip, if need be, yeah. and cast all things out. Yeah. You know, everyone in their right mind wants to be part of Him and have eternal life, being filled with His Spirit. <laughs> Anybody in their right mind would want to have eternal life, be part of Him, and filled with His Spirit. Become part of the church of the living God. You see, yeah. that's the church we want to be part of. Not this group, that group, this building, that building, this persuasion, the other persuasion. No. Church of the living God. The mystical body of Jesus Christ. I have a few more scriptures before we close. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. (laughs) So you have to quickly power in you. The God that raised, you can say, Christ from the dead in you, it will also quicken this mortal body. Whether it dies or whether you're alive when he comes, it will quicken this body. Now we go... To um, Acts 2.38 Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that's a promise. Acts 5.32 And we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost Whom God has given to them that obey him. It's not works, but, you know, it's it's relationship. And then there's another one. 
Luke 11, 13, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto the children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? <laughs> I had a friend, when it dawned on him, you need the Holy Spirit. He, he, he started to read the Bible and all these things, but he didn't actually click on it. And then he said, if the Lord will come now, I won't be going. I haven't got the Holy Ghost. And I said, well, you can ask him. Every night, him and me were on our knees. And he started to realize it's true. Lord, I want your Holy Spirit. Please give me the Holy Spirit. He prayed every night. And I prayed, Lord, please fill him with the Holy Spirit. Three weeks later, Holy Ghost filled him. Incredible. To them that ask him. Ask and you shall receive. I'll give you a quote here. If you say, I've got faith in God, and he's never given you the Holy Ghost, he's never recognized you yet. You see, some of those people say, I believe in God. But he haven't got the Holy Ghost. It's because he never recognized your faith that he placed in him. There is still something hanging on. But when he gives you the Holy Ghost, he seals sealed you until the day of redemption. Amen. So you don't have the Holy Ghost one day and not the next. You seal until the day of redemption. See that that is something some people don't believe that. But I do believe it. <laughs> you know, I've met people who say, Ah, oh, I haven't seen you for a year. Are you still a Christian? I said, What? If you're a Christian, you know, <laughs> it, there's no way out of it. You've mm. never been a Christian if you leave, right. leave it again. You know, are you, are you still a Ruick? You know, of course, it's in my DNA. You know, it never changes. You, you know, these the things, it, it's crazy how people see these things. You know, being filled with the Holy Ghost will make you part of the church of the living God. Does that make sense? Being filled with the Holy Ghost makes you part of the church of the living God. Part of that mystical body. Then you're the bride. Then you are... I, I could give you all these quotes. I, I read hundreds of them. But... but uh, you, you're a believer, you're the bride, you, 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 he, he, his, his wife in that sense. You know, you're part of him when you have his Holy Spirit. And he never gives it to you until he accepts your faith, you place in him. When he knows you mean business, he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. And when you have the Holy Ghost, you are his. Then it's no longer, oh, no, you, you have to see it my way, otherwise you wouldn't be the bride. You know, people have these understandings and try to f form a unity around an understanding rather than the Spirit of God. And I'll tell you one thing. It's like I said, like in a marriage, if you communicate, if you have a love relationship and you see things differently, you come more and more into the unity of understanding as well. You know, when I, when I got married, I, I was 33 years old. And I had a, a career behind me and a lot of experience. I traveled around the world. I was uh, having top jobs and doing all sorts of things. I had a lot of experience, life's experience. So I marry a girl that's 18, has never left home, <laughs> never traveled further than a few miles, and uh, no experience. What brought us together was love. The spirit of love. <laughs> and we were married, but we saw things so differently. If I wanted to buy a, a table, <laughs> oh, oh, that's nice, something shiny, you know, just a bit of cardboard painted nicely, shiny. I like solid wood, you know, I said, oh, that's rubbish, or that's good. <laughs> we, we had different opinions, different tastes, and different things. <coughs> but you know, over the years, 
you don't want to make a clone out of your, your, your wife, but we start to see things in very similar ways. I mean, certain tastes is different. I like old stuff, antiques, and she's not that fussed on it, but that, that's fine. But with understandings, when it comes to understand the children or understand situations, we talk and we come to the same thing. You know, I don't want to go into details, but uh, about a month ago, somebody wanted us to write a letter for, or uh, confront certain people and, and, and do things. And she was um, all uh, writing things down and thinking about it. And, and then I was talking to her and we fellowshiped. And then she said, wow, you're right. We're not taking part of that, you know. So we contacted that other person and said, no, we, we don't want to be part of this. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's also part of, you know, forgiveness and this. But it didn't come instantly. It came by communication. And we started to have a unity, you can say, in doctrine. <laughs> Even though we have the unity in spirit, we came to the same understanding. And it doesn't always happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Same spiritually in, in church. Not everybody has the same uh, revelation or the same, uh, what do you call it, understanding. But it does come as we fellowship, as we read the Bible together, as we look at things. It does come. So you will always be part of it, no matter where you are, where you fellowship, or if you make a mistake. If you're born of the Spirit, <laughs> you know, if you have the Holy Ghost, when I, when I travel, I sometimes end up in all sorts of churches, you know. It doesn't take the Holy Ghost out of me. Even in a church, I don't necessarily agree with stuff that goes on, you know. You're still you. You know, it doesn't make take you out. You may not feel at home or comfortable. You say, Lord, do you want me here? Or is there somebody to talk to? Or what is it? You know, you, you go out in, in, in the streets and talk to people. You know, it doesn't make, make you a, a person of the world being in the streets. <coughs> but once we are sealed with the Holy Ghost, it's, it's in us. We are part of Him. And we are part of the Church of the Living God. God does not make mistakes. When He accepted your faith and filled you with His Holy Spirit, then you sealed until the day of redemption. No matter what. I know, I know some people disagree with that. Oh, you can backslide, you can fall out with God, you can. If you sealed, you want. You may have an anointing or get excited in some meeting or, 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 or God answered the prayer and, oh, wonderful, you can fall away again. But if you sealed, you know, you heard that story about um, what they used to do in the olden days, that they loaded. A, a carriage, say a train carriage, and then the inspector came and everything was right, everything that needs to be in it is in it, and then they sealed the carriage, and it was not to be opened until the destination. And I believe if God seals us, the inspector has been there, has checked, say, yeah, I'll accept your faith, sealed until the day of redemption. I love that, you know. But we need his approval. We need his stamp on our lives. We don't need man's opinions. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. You know, you come to our church, you do this, you play the organ or whatever it is, and, oh, you're a lovely person. You're fine. That's not the seal of God. That's the seal of man. That doesn't last until the day of redemption. It lasts as long as men are around you, as long as men are alive. But the seal of God will take you there. That's why we don't need the seal of approval of man. We need the seal of approval of God. Amen. You know, that's... I, I know that for a fact I can go to to, to places. And I, I know if I, if I go to certain pulpits and, and I would say, Brother, uh, and, and throw out a, a few quotes and scriptures and, and, and things and oh, we've got the message of the hour and, and all these things. 
Oh, praise God, praise God. You know, that's not man's, that's a man's seal. But if you receive it truly, God will seal you. Amen. And then you give God the glory. Because you received it from Him. Who died for your sins? I just ask you. Who died for your sins? Amen. Who shed blood? Not a single man. Jesus Christ. The man Amen. Christ Jesus. He shed blood. You bought with a price. You belong to Him. Yeah. You need His seal of approval. Nobody <clears throat> else's. And you know... I've had, I've had people telling, telling me, you're unstable, you're unstable. Because I didn't jump on the same bandwagon. You're unstable. But those people called us unstable had about, well, I don't know, maybe 10 different pastors and men they looked up to over the years. Who is unstable? change fellowship here, there, and the other. Mm -hmm. Who is unstable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's all that stuff. Man's approval. We don't need man's approval. Bronwyn didn't need other people's approval. She needed my approval. Mm -hmm. Oh, surely everybody wants you, you know. you this, you just dress this way and do that. Everybody would want you. No, we don't need man's approval. We need God's approval. And the Holy Ghost is, fills you. You know, when He seals you, when He comes and He's happy with the faith you place in Him, then He seals the carriage. Mm -hmm. Then He seals you. And then you're sealed until the day of redemption. If you slip up, you're still sealed. If, if you make a mistake, you're still sealed. If you feel down, you're still sealed. If you feel up, you're still sealed. But if you never had that experience, you're not sealed at all. You, you may be tossed by every wind of doctrine. You may be this or you may be that. Once you're sealed, you're sealed. I look, I like to finish here. with. Uh, I have another quote here. Every plant that my heavenly Father hasn't planted will be rooted up. But upon this rock... <coughs> I built my church, and the gates of hell can't shake it down. Exactly, I'm so glad, a spiritual revelation. The whole church is built on revelation upon this rock. And we know the scripture where Peter says, you're the son of the Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon this rock, this revelation, I built my church. Mm -hmm. Knowing Him and having a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. God in the flesh. Having a relationship, having a unity, having been born of His Spirit. Upon this revelation, I built my church. So we need <laughs> to be born of His Spirit. We don't need to join a church or a movement or whatever. Fellowship is good and go where God leads you. But... That truth is built upon this revelation. And the Holy Spirit will witness it. It's not learning it. You know, there was one scripture oh, where, where he, they, they know he's Christ, the Son of the living God, and he said, God tell no man. <laughs> Why? Because it's not by learning, it's by revelation. Mm -hmm. And the revelation is given by God. So that is the one, and there's one more here. The whole Bible is built on revelation. The whole church is built upon revelation. Matthew 17 says, For I said upon this rock, spiritual revelation, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. So true revelation comes from God, and receiving Christ will make you part of the church of the living God. And I, I, I just, um, I mean, there's so many things that could be said. And I just try to point out a, f a few things. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we ought to <laughs> be filled with the Holy Ghost and <coughs> allow him to move through us and um, respect and don't contaminate the temple with other things. You know, there's so many aspects 
But to be part of the church of the living God is when you're born of his spirit. Mm -hmm. And and uh, if you think, hey, I'm part of the church of the living God. I'm part of the church of the living God. And these signs follow them that believe. The living church has signs and wonders. The living church has the power of God in their midst. Maybe not just through one man or the other, through various ones. You know, and it's so exciting to be part of that. It's like somebody, as I said, uh, marries into a rich family. Suddenly, you're well off. <laughs> and it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. And I'm so glad that the Lord found it, uh, accepted my faith are placed in him. And as I said, he gives the approval. He gives the Holy Spirit. He knows when we give it all to him. He knows when we mean business. You know, I never had a such a quickening at first, you know, um, Oh, I give it all to the Lord, you know. I just knew if I do, <laughs> I can't, be, can't go back. Mm. I can't be myself anymore. But the love of God was so powerful and so strong, it just drew me in. I had no choice. It was so wonderful. You know, <laughs> you, you, you're attracted by the light. You're attracted by the love of God, and it just draws you in. And I'm so glad that he's still the same. And uh, I believe when we don't want to judge each other in a sense, oh, you're it or you're not it or you're not it. It's not for us to decide. Mm -hmm. I always say it's, it's the bridegroom who chooses the bride. And you can say, well, reading the Bible and things, I don't think he will choose one like this. I mean, I, I can give you a quote, you know. Where they talked about uh, in the Old Testament, people were born out of wedlock, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody says, uh, "Brother Brown, do you think a person like that can be the bride?" And he didn't know. Uh, he didn't say, "Thus says the Lord," or whatever. He said, "Well, uh, sort of looking at the scriptures and knowing God's foreknowledge, I, I probably wouldn't think he would choose one an Ill illegitimate child." Wow. I, he may have changed his mind on that one. I don't know. But you see, if you look at that way, he has chosen me. I was worse than just illegitimate. I was a sinner, one of the worst ones. And he's chosen me. He's chosen you. You know, he's in Christ. We are purified, cleaned up, Justified. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even come in. Otherwise, somebody illegitimate couldn't even go to the congregation of the Lord for, I don't know how many generations it says. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't be allowed in church. No. It's the blood of Christ that cleanses mm -hmm. us from all sin. Mm -hmm. And if God gives you the seal of approval, then you're approved of God. Then we don't need any, any man's opinion. We need to know God sealed me. He accepted me. And you know, we have a marriage license, okay? It's not wearing a ring on the finger or anything like that, but we have a marriage license. And it's, we have witnesses who heard me making a promise to my wife. And she has witnesses. Uh, I have witnesses. I heard her making a promise to me. You know, we have... The approval, we, we had a marriage before God, we had approval. We don't need anybody to tell us they're from. So, she can't be your wife because look at your old life, you know. She never drank in her entire life and I've been a drunkard. Oh, that, I'm sure God wouldn't give, you, give her a husband like that. You know, I don't think so. If God... <laughs> If the husband approves and she approves, the deal is done. And if God approves of your faith, you place it in him, you don't need any man to tell you different. And the Holy Ghost in you 
will testify that Christ is with you. It will actually change your life and it will give you the power and you act also like you're part of the church of the living God. I don't know if it makes sense to you. I don't want to be controversial about things or, or denounce this or say that. But I just want to make sure you know it's God that approves. It's the husband, the, the bridegroom that chooses the bride. And it's not man saying, if you're this way or that way. You know, I, I know for people, when the um, uh, daughter wants to marry a man, and then the, uh, that's a fact, and I'm not saying it's wrong or bad, but you see, then the, the dad has to approve of that man. In, in, in the real sense of proof. So, yep, you can have my daughter and marry her. While well, some say, well, to, uh, to get my approval, you have to have a good job first. You have to own your own house first. You have to have this first or that first, you know. And uh, then you get approval. So if, if the man means business and wants the girl, he'll put every effort into it to do that, to get the approval. Some say, yes, you love her, you still be with her if things go wrong or if this, you love her, yes, you have my approval, you know. And it is the dad of the daughter that gives the approval in that sense. But we can't say this is the condition of approval. It's different with, with each individual. You find a person that may... Uh, has nothing and messed up the life and then say, say and, and uh, he wants to marry somebody's daughter and the dad looks at him and sees the past life and sees this but he can see something genuine has happened something changed yes you can have her yeah you know you, you heard that story about uh, 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 Brother Bram talks about it when he was young. He married two couples. One was a rich couple and one was very, very poor. They didn't even have money for a minister and all these kind of things, you know. I mean, in those days, usually they were paid for that. And he married them and they were living in an old uh, car body or box car or whatever it's called. And, and all these things and he said look will you stay with him even if you know if you have no money and if you haven't got new clothes yes yeah I love him and she loved him and he loved her he married them and here's this rich couple and uh, married them as well he said about a year later he thought he'd go and investigate how they are he sneaked up on them <laughs> on both couples and one of them, the poor one, he sneaked up and he saw them sitting outside that old camper thing. She was on his knees and he said, darling, look, I try very hard and do this and we're, we're going to make it. And they loved each other. <clears throat> and then he went to the rich couple and sneaked up too. And he heard them arguing and fussing and fighting. Yeah, you know, what is it? It's love. It's not necessarily the outside. <laughs> It's a true love. And, you know, God has, you, you can say, if the Holy Spirit fills this rich couple and the Holy Spirit f fills this poor couple, they're both part of the church of the living God. It doesn't make a difference. But we try to make a difference. You know, we can cut out people because they don't see things exactly the way I see it. Look, I have a relationship with my heavenly bridegroom. And you have a relationship with him. And some things he ministers to you, they're for you. They're not for me or the public. Sometimes he ministers something to you that you can share to edify the body. But you see, we're not all hands. We're not all feet. We're not all eyes. We're not all ears. But we are part of that same body. And, and uh, I believe in harmony. Have you ever seen a person with elliptic fits they jerk and jump all over the thing and foam at the mouth and, and kick and hurt themselves and whatever because all the members 
are confused because they're not responding to the brain. There's something's wrong there, an interference. And then <laughs> the hand punches the head and, and the foot kicks the wall and what, whatever. If there's a harmony, is when you attached to the head. If we're attached to Christ, to, to the head of the church, if we're attached to him and led by his spirit, we work in harmony. And if one has a need, we try to help that need. If one is down, we try to lift him up. If one's a bit too high, we, we probably try to clip his wings. You, you know, we, we try to work together. But we need to be attached to the head. Where do you get your inspiration from? Oh, well, experience. I've known people, I know a thing or two. I've been, you know, around for so long. I know a thing or two. No, it all comes by inspiration by the Holy Spirit. All the rest is just man's learning and doing. We all can do that. We can learn. You know, I said, I said to Bronwyn, this morning I said, you know, you know, people call them lay preachers. What is a lay preacher? One that's not educated, one that didn't go through Bible school and college and hasn't got a, a title, uh, whatever it's called, uh, a title, and one gets paid for his services and all that. And the lay preacher is just one that speaks from the heart anywhere. And I'll tell you what, when I was a young Christian, I heard mostly lay preachers and was greatly blessed. There were farmers in a village who had an experience in the Lord and gave his heart to the Lord and, and then he was sharing the things of God. He was sharing of, of how he used to get angry with the cows when he was milking them and punching them. He's not doing it anymore. And, you know, all simple things. But Lay preachers, I was greatly blessed. They talked down to earth. They talked about the things which are going on around you. They talked about the battles of life. They talked about the, the, how the devil attacks and all, all these things. I was greatly blessed. And then you, you hear an intellectual speaker. Well, it's, it's actually lovely to listen to. I, I like it when people can talk well and all that. It's beautiful. But I'm more a down to earth person, I'll tell you that much. Well, let's just pray. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would just uh, minister to our hearts even when we leave here, Lord. Not that we want to have confusion or controversy, but we want to have the Holy Spirit ministering to us. We want to be certain that we are part of you, that we are, and, and be encouraged to know that we're part of the church of the living God knowing who we are and I just pray that you would just continue to minister to us and lead us to scriptures and minister by your Holy Spirit to us in the coming days that we may fa find our place where you ordained us to be that we are found in Christ in Jesus name I pray Amen yeah, you know I was talking to a man the other day it's the same thing. We, we all know the story of Gideon. We all know it. Uh, or most of us know it. How he was one of, of Israel. One of God's children, you can say. And here he was hiding from the enemy. He was hiding and, and trying to save some food and all these things. And then he said, why is it? He was like a wimp. And then it took, you can say, the Holy Spirit, an angel, to come and say, the mighty man of valor. What? Man of valor? What's he talking about? That was the truth. It wasn't manifested. You know, when you're in trouble, when we caught up in, in, in wrongdoings and, and whatever, does not mean you not one of his. But you haven't, it hasn't sunk in. But if you realize, I'm a son of God, what am I doing here? You know? Well, why am I bothered with this? I'm a daughter of God. I'm, I don't have these gossip parties there. That, that gets a bit too much for me. 
You know, you know that's, that's what it is. When you realize you're part of the church of the living God. You're the church of the living God. When you realize, I'm a son of God, I'm a daughter of God, Christ is coming, then you suddenly realize, yes, I'm a mighty man of valor. Lord, what's next? Oh, tear down those idols first, you know. <laughs> and you know, can you imagine Gideon getting that revelation of what God calls him? Not what man called him. Man called him a wimp and a, you know, running away from things. But what God called him. And then he said, well, tear down those idols. Well, he did it secretly at night. He was a bit scared of it, you know. He went to tear them down at night. If you pray, like, I'm a son of God. I'm going to have a relationship. I, I pray more. Oh, first you pray secretly. You wouldn't want anybody to know, you know. You see, it's... <laughs> But then when, when he, he saw more, he needed confirmation. He needed confirmation again and again. And God gave it to him. And then he knew, I know he's given me uh, the victory over this enemy. And it was all done. You know, it's such a wonderful story when he goes through all the different scenarios and see how in the natural he was nowhere near it. And then God told him who he was and if God tells you you're son of God you are the temple of the Holy Ghost the church of the living God and you're like, well, what am I doing you know why am I tossed and pushed around no I'm not having that anymore let's sing let's sing um, let's sing two songs uh, one is um, into my heart let's sing that one first into my heart <laughs> Into my heart they love each other the, who remembers Bert who used to come to church before he died yes he had a terrible time with his wife he wasn't allowed to live in the house she put him out in the in a caravan when he started to come to church she used to try to stop him from coming to church he physically attacked him with a stick he sometimes came injured once she she um, hit his false teeth so he couldn't go to church and then he decided to go anyway Lord takes me with no teeth or with teeth you know <laughs> and uh, big struggle and then one day I said Bert you must have loved her when you married her you know the, what happened 
And he was telling me what happened. It was all sweet and lovely for years. And then in the village they lived, they had a town hall, a settlers hall. And this uh, woman came from overseas to make a speech. So she went along. And it was a feminist woman. And a different spirit came on her. And then the marriage was over. Now, what I'm saying, when people have problems, because the focus is not on the spirit of love, the focus is on understanding and seeing things differently. And if you focus on people having different ideas of, about scriptures or different interpretation, if that's the main focus, you always have struggles and, and hassles. If you focus on the love part, Love covers a multitude of sin. They say, look, we're in the same boy. I, I still love you. I don't agree with everything. But if you focus on where you agree and where you don't agree, if that's the focus, then, then you end up in divorce or something. If that's the focus, then you end up splitting churches. If that's the focus. Oh, I, 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 I watch, as I said, I watch these different things. This guy... Um, from Australia, pulpit. He is here. Christ has come. You know, I went over there once, and, and somebody was preaching his heart out for for about two hours. The Lord's come. He's here. You know, it's it's all over. You know, it's all all finished. You know, and and uh, hear me, or otherwise you're not making it. And you know, that split this church, and then it split that church, and then this one had this flavor, that one had that flavor. Where's the Spirit of God in it? Where's love in it? And you know, you can be married and have totally different opinions, but if love prevails, you stick together. If the opinions prevail, you split up. Absolutely true. And the same goes to church. You know, we, we aim to come into unity of understanding and of doctrine. We aim for that. That's why we encourage one another or, or share scriptures and like it says, iron sharpens iron and we, we share things together so we come into a, a, a common understanding but the Spirit of God prevails. That is, hey, we are brothers. You, you look at my, my children, the brothers. They're all different, you know. They're all different but they're still brothers. And if you focus on the differences... You don't talk to each other anymore. If you focus on we're brothers, you stick together again. <laughs> Amen. Let's finish with um, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me.
meditate upon these things. Read, uh, I think it's Ephesians 4, and this, uh, and uh, also Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and just pray about it and meditate upon it. The Lord will definitely enlighten you. God bless you. Thank you.